I've got tons and tons of plastic, as you see. Santa's dropped off his fat loads over here in my house today. Tons of plastic for me for Christmas for the reindeer. Let's go, go ahead and load this in the reactor. Now, <clears throat> you guys are probably looking at this and being like, Nature Jet, what on earth are you doing? Why are you throwing in the plastic like that? Well, my plastic shredder is acting like a goofball. Absolute goofball. The plastic shredder is not working out know exactly what's happening with it basically in short when i load plastic in it pretty much just floats at the top of the shredder the whole time it never ends up getting pulled down through the blades properly and working so i gotta load this plastic in manually which is very infuriating to me because i'm unable to measure it and weigh it properly like i want it to and of course i can load a lot less in this way as well so i'm just tossing in this carbon here as you see, like I said, it's very unscientific. If I could make it different, I would make it different a hundred times over. So you guys got to forgive me, but we got work to do. And I got to load this plastic in the machine, so I'm going to do it. So as you see, it's all up in there. I, I pretty much loaded the machine almost to the brim. And of course, like I said, if this was shredded, it would be so much more. Went ahead, pulled a vacuum on the machine. I want to show you guys. We're at 5.5 negative PSI, and then which equates to negative 285 millimeters of mercury which and that equates to uh negative 0.3 atmosphere now it's probably weird measurements and i agree it's weird but this pressure meter does not have the proper um uh i don't know like it doesn't have just inches of mercury on it it's weird why everything's negative like that so it's weird but you know we know a vacuum is negative one atmosphere so we're at about half a vacuum before i started it i appreciate you guys for watching this video here if you appreciate the work that i am doing in the research of plastic into fuel make sure you stop by naturejab.com slash donate you we have all forms of donations as well as the patreon links there or you can go to naturejab.shop and get you some merch support mother earth and look good doing it enjoy the video and thank you all right so we started the machine here six minutes in and this vapor is non-flammable as usual so i saw somebody in the comments say this is probably mostly just water vapor and some carbon dioxide maybe some carbon monoxide some things reacting with a little bit of residual oxygen left look at the temperatures there very cold 22 minutes in and the vapor is still non-flammable now if you guys remember uh my last run where we shred the plastic the vapor was flammable by about 20 25 minutes in uh, but it's not flammable now and i think it's actually having to do either it could be because of the type of plastic we put in pretty much almost pure pet um polyethyl terephthalate but it also could be because it's not shredded and the heat just isn't getting to a lot of plastic so you can see everything is still pretty cold 61c infrared pyrometers reading now the front body temperature is 100 degrees celsius which is interesting so you can see at this point it starts to catch a flame somewhat um, I wouldn't say it's completely flammable, but it does catch the flame, and the flame's invisible, so you guys just can't see it on camera, but it was starting to catch it, but it wasn't holding the flame. 31 minutes in, and uh, as we see, the front body temperature is 106 degrees Celsius, going down and going up a little bit, but the interesting thing is the front body temperature is actually the hottest, which I'll explain that as we go on, but we start to see actually some water droplets. And these water droplets, they come over pretty early uh, compared to what I've seen before. Now, 30 minutes is what I was seeing before my biggest run, before the explosion, before I moved the machine. But I haven't seen water droplets co or condensate come over this early and 30 minutes since. Now, um, mind you, that was oil coming over. We can see that we the, the natural gas is completely flammable about 35, 40 minutes in at this point. Uh, yeah, you see it's 33 minutes that the natural gas is completely flammable. And I pretty much wanted to go ahead and turn on the recovery pump as soon as we got our good stable flame. Because I'm trying to store this natural gas. I'm not trying to just flare it off, waste it. So 40 minutes in, natural gas flame is going strong. And we can see the temperatures there are starting to heat up. Front is still as hot as can be. And um, I, it's actually because I learned that one of the back magnetrons was not working this entire run. So I had this machine operating at about 90% power, 5 out of 6 magnetrons on. So I went ahead and turned on the recovery pump, as I said, and look at the natural gas coming out compressed there. Uh, really strong flow. Um, some people worry about when I just light it like this next to it. But the good thing is, um, for one, it's coming out at this pressure from the pump. So it's not coming out at you right from the tank when I light it like that, for one. So it's not going to suck back into the tank. And for two, uh, this natural gas is 100% um, flammable hydrocarbons and, and such. It's not oxygen-based. 
So you can see some more droplets, water droplets coming out. I start to spin the blades at this point. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but uh, you can see the, the fan on the motor spinning. By the way, this is the same motor from that survived the explosion and the fire, so that's impressive. So we see the water droplets coming down, and it's starting to really pick up. Now, I did put water bottles in there, Gatorade bottles, a lot of things with water in them, so it's kind of hard to know, but PET, polyethyl terephthalate, also does have oxygen within its molecular structure, so it's completely possible that the hydrogen from the plastic or from the hydrocarbon bonds is spilling apart, and the oxygen is spilling apart from the molecular structure of the polyethyl terephthalate and combining to form H2O, aka water so at this point i go ahead and measure the front of the machine and i measure the back of the machine to see is the front really hotter than the back or is it just that my thermocouples are off and well it's true that the temperatures are actually lining up and unfortunately this magnetron being out is making quite a big difference in temperature we always want the back of the machine to be super hot because that's where most of the plastic is so that's going to affect the run in a few ways but um look at the water coming over there on the sight glass a lot of water Tons of water, more water than we ever see. We are turning plastic into water, dirty, contaminated cancer water. You saw me there. I was just showing you one of the relays being off. That's the magnetron that's not working, unfortunately. I had it on for almost an hour before I figured out it wasn't working. So we only have five on app six. But we're 53 minutes in. Temperatures are looking good. And uh, once again, again, a lot of water, but no oil yet, though. It's just water. Now, it is condensate. It is picking up. So it does let me know that we will be seeing oil soon. So it's not an issue, but it's just like, wow, all this water. You can see some droplets of oil, a little stream starting to form, picking up there uh, as this run gets hotter and stuff. I actually am going to lower these pipes even more, and I'm going to actually end up taking the condensers that are on a slant off um, for my next run, hopefully. But... Uh, then we start to see some oils come over, some real oils. Look at those oils. Good stuff. Good flow. Not as good as I would expect, though, considering that we got this vacuum pump constantly sucking all the juices out this machine, constantly sucking all the vapors out this machine, constantly sucking all the demons out this machine. Hallelujah. Now, as you see, I was looking, uh, touching the pipes here, and I was touching them so we could see, you know, like, is the condenser doing its job, right? Is it keeping it cool? Because look at the temperatures. It's hot. The machine is getting hot at this point. Over 100 C on every point on the body. Just so you know, water boils at 100 C. So when it gets over 100 C, things start to get really toasty. Things start to get really hot. Things start to get bloody hot wheels up in here. So look at the oil coming over. It starts to get this little dark tingy, like we're in Lord of the Rings, and it's an orc, some orc piss or something, right? Real dark warthog piss oil. I don't know. Look polyethyl terephthalate, you know, sometimes some companies don't even bother with it doing pyrolysis, and it probably is because of this nonsense, all this water, this dark oil, I kind of see it as it doesn't really matter at the end anyway, because we got to refine the oil regardless, but you see, we're at 200 C in the middle body temperature, so it's getting pretty hot, look at the negative pressure, negative 2.2 PSI, 133 infrared pyrometer, now what is the infrared pyrometer when I say that, the infrared pyrometer is actually the thing that's supposed to measure the internal temperature. I don't think they're doing their job, though. I think that it's still just measuring the metal from the inside. Because it was measuring the plastic. It's going to be way hotter than 133C because plastic doesn't even break down until about 300C. But look at this oil. It gets even darker, even uglier. We're almost two hours in. Temperature's they went up somewhat, but not very much other than the front. The front is starting to get hot, but I did move the blades to get most of the plastic to the front of the machine. So I go ahead and I turn the back magnetrons off here. Because what's the point of having the back magnetrons on when all the plastic is in the front? Just a waste of energy. So now we only have, what? What is that? Three magnetrons on? Oil still coming out at a consistent flow, a low flow, though. So I was like, well, at this point... I'm going to stop the machine pretty soon because I'm not really impressed with this oil flow. I don't like how it looks either. It's ugly. Two hours, 30 minutes in. Take a look at the temperatures. Like I said, starting to get hot, 250C. The machine probably could have run for another hour, truth be told. Uh, but I went ahead. I started to stop it here, and we got up to about 200 PSI of natural gas, 20 kilowatt hours consumed from that run, just from uh, the, the energy of the run alone, not shredding plastic or anything. And we did get some oil here. Look at the... Ugh, the oil, man. This was the worst smelling oil I've ever smelled. Worst ever, okay? It, just, it smelled horrible. I can't even describe it. It kind of smelled like... It had like a metallic smell to it, and then it just like... It just it just smelled kind of like rotten. Like it, it, it wasn't good, but I was like, well, we're going to refine it. Hopefully that smell will come out, you know? <laughs> but... <clears throat> 
you never know when you're messing with this stuff. I'm messing with truly with the devil's brew here. So speaking of distillation and refining, well, we're getting right to it. Um, and this is what we're going to do. I go ahead. I got this still pouring in my dark crude oil. Now, this is crude oil from a multitude of runs. OK, this is not just from this run. And the reason I'm doing this is I got this still cheapest still from Vevor, some cheap Chinese still. And I want to see, you know, how it works. Now, just for reference, guys, last time I distilled stuff, I blew myself up. So I'm running this still off of the natural gas I made from the process. That's why I want to make so much natural gas. Go ahead, turn it on. We all know distillation is a very long process, very long game. It'll take like two hours or so. Um, and so I go ahead, start it. it. Takes a long time to heat up. And start to hear some oil boiling at some points here, but the flame from the natural gas is completely invisible. I just want to always highlight that to you guys, just how clean burning this flame was here. Um, very clean burning. And so it took a long, long time before this thing got up to temperature, but it did get up to temperature though. And once it came up to temperature, I want you guys to see at about 90 to 100 C, we start to get this really good looking condensate this with this yellow kind of green color. So unfortunately, I did not have enough natural gas to complete the distillation. What started to happen was I ran out because it took two hours of natural gas just to get it up. But the idea is it doesn't really matter the energy that it takes to distill this plastic because it's coming from the same process anyway from the natural gas. So ignore the glove here, but I wanted to show you guys the carbon from this run of just loading all the plastic in like that. So it actually ended up all coming to the front of the machine as one big solid piece of carbon. And this lets me know I did cut the run short, just barely though, because this carbon is brittle. It is obviously still some plastic in there. Start to break it apart with a hammer so I can go ahead and put these chunks back in the machine. Any pro carbon that does not become completely carbonized, I just put back in the machine, no big deal. Uh, so I do that, and I'm actually going to be doing a run with my lab waste. Uh, I have a ton of plastic I need to go through, but I have a lot of lab waste just from, you know, the construction of the machine and moving it and all this stuff, oil changes on my generator, and all this stuff can go right in the machine and form, you know, fuel. So I'm going to put this in the machine. Now, that reminds me, guys, I am working to get my stuff analyzed, and in order to do that, I need to do runs of every individual type of plastic. So just plastic water bottles, just probably polypropylene water bottle caps, just plastic bags, a LDPE, just milk cartons and stuff, HDPE. You know, I got to do that stuff so I can get the analysis done accurately with proper controls in place instead of just random runs every time. But I'm doing these runs right now just to get a large quantity of oil to test my distiller, to test the natural gas. I'm still optimizing things, guys. But, you know, you see this lab waste is just a little bit of everything. Uh, so this is kind of like municipal solid waste almost. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this episode. I appreciate you guys for watching as always. And as I always say, if you guys want to support this project in any way, go to naturejab.com slash donate. You can get you some merch there. Um, you can also donate. We have all the types of ways to donate possible. Naturejab.shop. Get you some merch. Support Mother Earth. Look good doing it. I appreciate you guys and you guys take care.